Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at examples for a trans resistance amplifier, a, a current controlled voltage source, and as well as a current amplifier, a current controlled current source, which are the, the last two types of amplifiers uh, that we have talked about. And now we're going to see examples of them. So an example of a uh, current controlled voltage source or a trans resistance amplifier using an op amp would be as follows. Um, I have my, my op amp, uh, negative and positive input terminals, and then the uh, current control voltage source, the output is a voltage, but the input is a current. And so I will have uh, my input current I in, and then basically I have a feedback path from output to input. Negative feedback, so the uh, path is fed from the output to the inverting input terminal. Uh, feedback resistor I'm going to call R. Uh, and my output is taken at the output terminal of the op amp. And so I want to come up with an expression for the trans resistance of the circuit V out over I in. Uh, first thing, I can start by analyzing the circuit using the ideal op amp assumptions. Uh, basically, since I have negative feedback, I can assume that the positive and negative input terminal are sitting at the same voltage, a uh, voltage of zero volts. And then I can also assume uh, that there is no current flowing into the input, the negative input terminal of the op amp. So basically, I have zero volts right there. And then uh, zero current flowing into the negative input terminal of the op amp, which means all of my current I in uh, must be flowing through the feedback resistor uh, into V out. So I can write, uh, first of all, as I mentioned, my V minus should be equal to V plus, will be equal to zero volts. And that's just from the ideal op amp assumptions and the fact that I have negative feedback connection. Uh, and then I can write uh, from KCL, uh, the current entering that negative input terminal node, I in, must be equal to the current uh, leaving that node. And therefore, the voltage V out is the result of a voltage drop uh, between the negative input terminal uh, due to the current flowing through resistor R, which we just determined is equal to II. And so, therefore, my V out voltage is equal to negative I in times R. Uh, <clears throat> negative because the voltage is dropping, and again, the current is coming from the, the um, negative input terminal, that's where the, one of the terminals of the resistor is connected, and the current is flowing in the direction from that node, which is sitting at zero volts towards V out. Um, from here, I can come up with an expression for my trans resistance, Rm, which is output voltage over input current, which will be equal to um, negative R. So this will be an example of a trans resistance amplifier. Uh, and then finally, an example of a, a current amplifier, a current control current source. And I will have as follows an op amp with its two uh, terminals. And I'm going to have um, also a, a current input, since it's a current controlled uh, current source. Um, so a current input and a current output. So my current input is going to be applied in this case to the inverting input terminal. The uh, non inverting input terminal is connected to ground. And then I have a sort of T network connection of resistors here, where the output of the circuit is, it's a current, and it's actually the current flowing through a, a load resistor RL, which is connected in the feedback path of the circuit. So this is another example of a floating load type of circuit. Uh, so this will be my I out. And these two resistors I'm going to label R1 and R2 where R1 is also connected to ground. 
Uh, so I can see uh, several things here, but for one thing, I'm going to notice that the, um, since we have a negative feedback connection, and I'm assuming that uh, the op amp is an ideal op amp connected in negative feedback, then the voltage at the inverting input terminal must be equal to the voltage at the non-inverting input terminal, so equal to zero volts. And also the current going into the negative input terminal of the op amp must be equal to zero. So all of II or I in is flowing through resistor R2. Okay. Um, now, if the current is flowing through resistor R2 in that direction, that means that uh, there's going to be a voltage drop across resistor R2 so that there's going to be a voltage uh, V2 um, uh, at this node, which is going to be lower than zero volts, lower than ground. And so I can say by Ohm's law, I'll have that V2 is equal to zero minus I in times R2. Now, because I have a negative voltage at that node, V2, then a current is going to develop by Ohm's law because there is a voltage differential across resistor R1. This node is sitting at zero volts. This node is sitting at some negative voltage, and therefore I'm going to have a current flowing in that direction. I'm going to label it I1 since it's the current flowing through resistor R1. And uh, also by Ohm's law, I1 is going to be equal to uh, the voltage across resistor R1 divided by the resistance, or 0 minus V2 divided by R1. And now I can go ahead and apply KCL uh, to figure out the value of I out. Uh, some of the current centered in node V2 equals some of the currents leaving node V2. The two currents centering are II and I1. The current leaving is I out. And so by KCL, I have that I out is equal to I1 plus II. Um, and so I out is equal to, and um, I can see from the first expression that uh, from, from my Ohm's law expression, what I have I1 is equal to negative V2 divided by R1, that I can replace V2 by its value and um, come up with an expression of I1 in terms of II. So this will basically be equal to negative V2. V2 is negative II times R2. So I can express this as II R2 divided by R1. And so I can just rewrite this as um, II times R2 divided by R1 plus 1. And so then I have an expression, or I can come up with an expression for the ratio of my output current to the input current, I out over I in, which is beta, the current gain, which is equal to basically 1 plus R2 divided by R1. And again, if we wanted to uh, figure out the conditions for linear operation of the circuit, which we um, always should try to do whenever we are uh, designing or analyzing a circuit, uh, it will be as always. We will just need uh, for V out to be less than the saturation voltage in both cases. And then uh, we can solve for V out and, um, and figure out the range of input, in this case, input currents uh, that I can provide uh, at the input as signals, and I still have the op amp operating in the linear region. Uh, so this concludes um, examples of the different types of, of amplifiers. We have covered um, voltage amplifiers, transconductance amplifiers, transresistance amplifiers, and, and current amplifiers. Um, you can see that the techniques that we have been using to analyze these circuits are always the same. Uh, we start from the ideal op-amp um, uh, model. And so we consider the, the three particularities or the three idealities, three assumptions that we make is one, the current flowing into the input terminals is equal to zero. 
Um, that's because we're assuming the input resistance to be infinity. Two, we're assuming that uh, the um, output resistance of the amplifier is equal to zero, and therefore um, we're assuming that the amplifier can provide um, any output disregarding pretty much, at least for the time being, uh, disregarding its current limitations. And uh, three, we're assuming that when the op amp is connected in negative feedback, and only when it is connected in negative feedback, we can assume uh, V plus and V minus to be equal to each other, the voltage on the positive and negative input terminals to be equal to each other. Um, with those assumptions, and then just the standard rules of circuit analysis, Ohm's law, Kirchhoff current law, Kirchhoff voltage law, we should be able to analyze any op amp circuit, uh, no matter how complex, no matter how many uh, op amps or different components in the circuit. Um, and so the next type of circuits using op amps we're going to be looking at are circuits to solve mathematical operations. Thank you.